Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, we give you praise, and we bless your holy name. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for our spirit life. I be able to call upon your wonderful name. Lord, we glorify you right now because you are God all by yourself. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for all that you are doing for us right now and what you are yet to do. Hallelujah. Our God is a great God and we do love you, dear Lord, because you first loved us and you shed your blood for us upon the tree. We glorify you. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We glorify you. Hear us and bless us. Touch us and keep us. Bless us. There are teleconference as we go forth. Lord, we are pleading for you to inspire our hearts. We are pleading to you, Lord, to open our understanding to your word. We are pleading to you, Lord, to draw us nearer to you and let your love and mercy cover us. Let your grace, your peace and love abide with us. Lord, we glorify you. You are worthy of our praises. You are worthy, O oh God, of all that honor and glory that we can give unto you, Lord. You are the great I am. You are the everlasting Father. Your days is of old, hallelujah. You have no beginning of days, no, and no end of days, hallelujah. You are God Almighty, hallelujah. Ever present, ever powerful, hallelujah, all, all knowing. Lord, we bless you right now in the name of Jesus. Bless us now, touch us, Lord, guide us, Lord, and give us a spirit of praise and a spirit of glory. And we ask you these blessings in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Greetings. Greetings, my brethren. And we are here again on another teleconference service. Hallelujah, though the Bible says where there are two or three, hallelujah, gathered together in my name, I will be there in the midst. And Lord, we, th we know the Lord is with his people. Whenever we talk about the Lord, he is present. Whenever we, you know, we commune to each other regarding the word of God, he is present. So we know that the presence of the Lord is here. And um, we just want to thank God for his presence and we ask God to lead us and guide us along the way. Praise the name of the Lord. I prayed and I'm going to go straight into the word. Hallelujah. And today my topic will be for about forgiveness. Last week we covered um, love, which is a very important subject. And you know, God is love. And we learn that from the scripture, that without God, there's no love. So God is love. God is the epitome of love. God is synonymous with love. So now we want to talk about forgiveness. I've only got one hour, so I'm going to go straight into the word. Praise the Lord. Thank God for all. Everyone has joined us. I'm sure others will come along as we go along. Um, the scripture I want to bring to us now is taken from St. Matthew's chapter 18. St. Matthew's chapter 18. And I'm going to read from verse 21. And uh, as I said, this is, topic is about forgiveness. So it says, Then Peter said, unto him, that's unto the Lord, said, Lord, how oft shall I for, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus answered and said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king who would take account of his servant. And when he began to reckon, one was brought unto him what he owed him, 10,000 talents. But the, f 
for as much as he had not to pay, the Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and his children, and all that he hath, and payment be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience upon me, for I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him of his debt. But the, cell, the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred pence. And he had laid his hand on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what thou owest. And the servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison until he should pay the debt. So when the fellow servant saw what was done, that he had no pity on his fellow, compassion on his fellow servant, and even as I had pity on thee. Now, when the, sorry, going back to verse 31. So when the fellow servant saw what was done, that he was not sorry, and came and told unto their lords what he had done, then the Lord, after that he had called unto him and said, O thou wicked servant, I, forgo, I forgave thee of all the debt, because thou desired me. Should not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity upon thee? And the Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that is due him. So likewise, thy heavenly Father also will do unto you, if he, for, if he from your heart forgive not every one his brother their trespass. Praise God. Praise God. This is all about forgiveness. Forgiveness. You know, sometimes we find it hard to say, I forgive you. Sometimes people go off, you know, do things to us and um, we find it hard to forgive. Okay. You know, we think about it and we say, no, maybe they offend us more than once. Maybe they offend us times after time. But it's very hard for us sometimes to say, I forgive. But then we see the disciple Peter came to the Lord and asked the question, how often should I forgive my brother? Seven times? Is it just seven times must I forgive my brother? But Jesus answered him clearly and said unto him, I say not unto thee seven times, but unto seventy times seven. Seventy times seven is a lot. I don't think any one of us has ever anyone offend us seventy times seven. That's a lot of numbers. I think it's calculated to be about 149 or something. But that's a lot of numbers. So basically, the word is telling us that we must have a heart of forgiveness. As children of God, for us to be pleasing before God, we must have a heart of forgiveness. And that's what this parable is telling us. And Jesus paid this parable unto them. So, in Jesus said that this king, there was a certain king, his servant owed him 
a large amount of money. As a matter of fact, it said 10,000 talents. That's a lot of money. And the king said to his servant, Come pay me what you owe me. And he besought the king, said, Lord, have, have mercy, I will pay. And he, besieged, he besought the king for mercy. And the king, in his goodness, opened his heart of mercies and said, I forgive you. And this same servant whom the king forgave of all that he had owed him had a companion who owed him a small amount of money in relation to what he owed the king because it was 10,000 talents that he owed the king and the, his fellow servant owed him just a few hundred. And he went to his fellow servant and said, Pay me what thou owest. And the servant appealed to him, See, be patient with me and I will pay. But he had no mercy upon his, uh, upon his fellow, fellow man. He had no mercy. He cast him in to the prison until he paid all that he owed. Now, it's just a lesson for us that we realize that we owe a debt to God. Each and every one of us. We owed a debt to God, a debt that we could not pay in a hundred years, in a thousand years. We could not pay that debt. That debt was beyond our comprehension. And Jesus came. And he paid the debt for us. That debt that we could not pay because of sin. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So we could not pay that debt. And Jesus came from heaven, sinless, and died on the cross and paid the debt. And only because of his death, burial, and resurrection that we have remission of sin. We have remission of sin through the blood of Jesus. So Jesus has paid a debt that we could not pay. And what God wants us to do as children of God is to show the same mercy to those who offend us to those who abuse us, to those who sin against us, to those who persecute us, that we should show forgiveness. Because that's what Jesus did. He came to give us forgiveness. His blood bought us forgiveness of sin. And so it says, we also should show forgiveness. And it's no point we say now we are followers of Christ and we are children of God and we are the church of the living God and in our heart, just check it out. Let us check it out. The Bible says, let every man examine himself. Yeah. So we need to check it out. See what, in our heart, if we have something against our brother, that our brother, our sister may transgress against us and we will not let it go. We will not forgive. And we, won't, we don't want to be in that position that we can't forgive. We have to have a forgiving heart. If we think about Jesus, when the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, when we, the Bible tells us that Jesus was upon the mount in chapter 5 verse 1 it says and seeing the multitude he went upon into the mountain and when he was set his disciples came unto him and his open, he opened his mouth and taught them saying blessed are the poor in spirit for there is a king, theirs is the kingdom of heaven 
Bless you. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Have you ever had a feeling, have you ever had a thirst after righteousness? Have you ever had a thirst for love and peace in your life? This is what it says, they shall be filled. But verse 7 is the verse I'm looking at now. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Now, if we look inside our heart and we look under all the people that we know and we associate with, and if we think there's something in us that we hold against them, we should open our heart to God and pray for them and go and make peace with them. You may not actually physically have to, but you have to make sure in your heart your heart is pure towards them. Yes. We can't have the Bible. David says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If we have anything in our heart against our brethren, then God cannot hear us. He will not hear us. The Bible says, if you have art against your brother, leave your gift at the altar. Go and make peace with him. So God wants us to have love. God wants us to have mercy, show mercy. In the in, in Sermon on the Mount, verse 7, it says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in, pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called children of God. You want to be blessed. We want to be blessed. Look at the beautitude. Look at the Sermon on the Mount. Look how the blessing come upon us. Poor in spirit. That means you have a hunger and a thirst for God. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. Sometimes we have to be in a place where we do, we do feel to mourn because things are not the way we want them to be. Things are not going the way we want them to be. We are not satisfied with what is happening. So many things are happening. We're not satisfied. We, we mourn. The Bible said we groan after to be clothed unto righteousness. Blessed, says of the merciful, for ye shall obtain mercy. If we know anyone, I'm just saying that, you know, we got to search ourselves, you know, because we say we are children of God and we have to search ourselves. We have to consider our works. We have to consider carefully. It's no point we saying, Lord, Lord, and in our heart, our heart is not right. That's right. We have to look inside our heart and make sure we are at peace. Yes. Sure. The Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man right. shall see God. We are people of peace. We are peacemakers and we have peace in our heart and when we have peace in our heart we, have, we are at peace with the world but we have to find the peace in our heart and the peace in our heart come from God because Jesus said my peace I leave with you not like the world give it so God has got a peace that he left with us we have got the peace that God has given us and this peace is what can give us the grace to say I forgive and you know you're thinking about 
Jesus was upon the cross and is the is a, a epitome of forgiveness. While he was on the cross, he had nails in his hands and his feet. He had the crown of thorns upon his head. He was mocked and ridiculed on the cross. They say, the prison on, the, on, the, on one side says, you save others and you can't save yourself. But he did not know the will of God. You save others, but you can't save yourself. But because he of his bowels of mercies, you see, this is God, you know, and we have to see Jesus, we have to see God in Jesus because Jesus was God. Because of the bowels of mercies that God had. Even though he was on the cross suffering. Because we know he suffered. He suffered, he bled and died. Even though he was on the cross suffering. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. That's what he was. The King of all Kings. The Lord of all Lords. He was on the cross Bleeding. And what did he say? He looked on the world and those that nailed him to the cross. He looked down upon them. Those who were mocking him. He looked down and he said, Father, forgive them. Because they know not what they do. What we have to realize, my brethren, and you know, sometimes, you know, we have to look in ourselves. What we have to realize is that people who offend us, you have to use those words that Jesus says, they know not what they do. So we have to have the mindset and the understanding that if anyone offend us, they offend us, but they know not what they do. And if we realize that they know not what they do, then we should forgive them easily. Look at the case, I mean, in the natural world, someone who's, have a, who's psychic, who's sick, mentally sick, and they go out and they may commit a murder or something like that. The state will look at them in a different light from someone who's fully mentally fit. So, so it is when we realize that people who sin against us, they don't sin against us because they don't know what they are doing. And so forgiveness should be something settled. In our hearts, among all men, that we should forgive. Amen. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. When we know that we can forgive any one, for you know we can forgive, then we have a blessing because we are showing mercy. Jesus showed mercy when he said, "Forgive them." For they know not what they do. He showed mercy. Yeah. In Psalm 18, Psalms 18, Psalm 18 and verse 23, David says, I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore hath the Lord compassed me, recompense me according to my righteousness, according to the cleansiness of my eyes, my hands in his eyesight. So David realized that God knew who he was, understand him, knew his thought, 
David had that kind of um, relationship with God that he realized that he says, where can I flee from your presence? That is important to understand that God is with, he knew that God was with him all the time. And in law, God's eyes was upon him. And we as children of God have to realize that the eyes of God is upon us. He says, I was also upright before him and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore has the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness, cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. With the merciful, he went on to say, Thou wilt show thyself merciful. With the upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. So our God, brethren, we have to realize how good our God is and how God look at us. How God observe us and how the blessings that he has in store for us is awaiting us. We, must, we have to walk the walk. It's not just the talk. Because, you see, sometimes we say things with our mouth. But our heart is not saying what our mouth is saying. Our heart is saying a completely different thing. We want to, whatever is in our heart, whatever comes out of our mouth, should be what is in our heart. Because God is not judging by the lip service. He wants to know when he looks in us. Oh, my servant is merciful. My servant is forgiving. I will show him mercy. I will give him, my grace will be upon him. Because our God, God is a God of righteousness. Amen. He's a righteous God. And looking at the uh, at James, James the uh, the apostle of James, in James chapter two, verse thirteen to eighteen, um, James says, "For he shall have judgment without mercy, that has not shown mercy." And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. For he shall have judgment without mercy. For he has showed no mercy. You know, we have power to show mercy. Yes. We have power to forgive. That's right. Some people don't. But God has bestowed unto our power of forgiveness and mercy and love. And that only comes from the love of God that we have in us. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath no mercy. So I'm saying uh, there's some people who, who claim to be Christian and yet their heart is upset with someone or someone else upset them and they just can't make peace whatever it is that's what I'm saying that's why we have to have that heart of mercy and forgiveness that's right sometimes some people someone may you know the simplest thing because someone may even say a simple thing of just an offensive word and we realize that someone has said an offensive word against us. And from the time that we hear that someone has said an offensive word against us, we say, I, I don't want anything to do with that person. I, I, I finish with that person. Just like that. But we forget what Jesus did for us. And the great, the, the, the way he forgave us, and the debt 
So Jesus expect God expect that whatever it is that we should always be able to show mercy and forgive. This message may not be for you, but it's for us to realize what God expect of us. So he says, James went on to say, if a brother or sister is naked, be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace and be warm and be filled. Where's the love? Where's the mercy? You see somebody who's destitute and in need of naked and destitute of daily food and you just say, depart in peace. Be warm. Be warm and be filled. This is what, we, this is what James is saying is that we should be able to reach out Amen. reach out to others That's right. maybe those you know the Bible says it's better to give than to receive Amen. sometimes when we pray we call, we call upon the Lord and we say Lord give me this I need this Lord I need that Lord help me here Lord help me there Lord, you see, you see this, you see that. God see everything already. Well, how often have we said, Lord, I lift you up. You have done so much for me. You have brought me from a mighty long way. You have taken me through the water. You have taken me through the flood. You have taken me through troubled times. You have taken me through sorrow. You have taken me through pain. You have kept me alive. You have, you have put a roof over my head. You have put food on my table. Oh God, you, I have eyes to see. I have ears to hear. I have feet to walk. I have hands to lift up and to give you praise. How often do we say these prayers? How often do we lift up the Lord? And every time there's always something new. And sometimes we, we become like the children of Israel when God delivered them from the hands of Pharaoh. And they went through the Red Sea. And they got a bit thirsty. Some of us are a little thirsty and we start crying. They got a little bit thirsty and they started to chide Moses. They started to complain. They got a bit hungry and they started to talk to Moses. Why you brought us out into the, the wilderness to suffer? Why? They don't realize the freedom that God gave them. They never thought about the freedom. When they were in Egypt, they were under the whip. And they never thought about being free. They wanted to go back to Egypt. And so sometimes, the children of God, sometimes when, when, we, when, when trouble hits us, we think about, oh my, when I was in the world. You don't think of the freedom that the devil has not got his paws on us and we are free. They hear that those that God, Jesus, God said free, they are free indeed. Hallelujah. We have liberty. Yes. Money cannot buy the spiritual liberty that we have. Amen. Money cannot buy the spiritual liberty that God gave us. And no man can stop us to worship God. No one can stop us from giving glory to God. And as children of God, we should not fear once we are able to be in contact with God. We should not fear. Imagine that He's Almighty. And all that we see going on around us is just <laughs> child's play. All this Corona virus, COVID-19, this child's play. We're talking about the true and living God. Amen. 
We are talking about the God who spoke and it was done. It stood still. We are talking about the God who can who, who can still the raging sea. I don't know and I've ever experienced and see how rough the sea can become. How boisterous the waters can be when there's a storm and the, on, on the sea. How deadly and fearful it can be. And in our life sometimes life can be it can we can be so fearful things that come upon us. We can be in fear, but we must remember he that calmeth the sea can calm our troubles, can calm our pain, our pain. And we know that this God that we serve is invincible. He's all powerful. And when we realize who we are, we stand up and be counted. We don't follow the crowd. Praise the Lord. We follow Jesus. Sometimes not many people will follow Jesus when trouble comes. It's alright when he's there to feed the multitude, the 5,000, everybody's happy. But when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, there was no one there except his disciples. When he was in how a judgment hall, when he was in the judgment hall, there was no one there. No one there to appeal for him. So we have to realize the God we serve, he set us an example of love. And I say, brethren, let us be at peace. Let us be at peace with the world. Let us be at peace with our brethren. And let us have that heart of forgiveness. So James is telling us what profit. He went on to say, depart and be warm. Notwithstanding, he says, um, that the, those things that needed in the body and what do it profit. So even so, he went on to say, James went on to say, if it hath not works, if faith if so, faith has not works, is dead. Faith without works is dead. Being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So, what is telling us is that Sometimes we say things with our mouth. We say I love with our mouth. We say I forgive with our mouth. But check the heart. Check what the heart is saying. Because it says faith without work is dead. In other words, lip service. I love you. I forgive you. And yet, no, I don't really forgive you. But I just say it. So I said, Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devil also believe and tremble. So believe, is, believe, believe God is one thing. But the Bible tells us about those that have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. So people know they oh everybody said, Oh yes, I love God, I serve God, I, I love God. So everybody, everybody loves God, serve God. Everybody Christian. But do they deny the power of God? Do they show the love of God, the true love of God? And that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to show him the true love. And I'm looking at, again on the Luke. Luke chapter 18 and verse 9. I'm going to read down. It says, And Jesus spoke this parable unto him. 
unto them, them that trust in their righteousness and despite others. So I, I like the parables of Jesus because, you know, a parable is a earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So Jesus spake this parable unto them. He said, two men went up into the temple to pray. The one was a Pharisee, the other a publican. The publican stood and prayed thus with himself. He prayed to himself, with himself. He must be praying with himself, to himself. He said, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote his breast, saying, God be merciful unto me, a sinner. I tell you, this is Jesus. I tell you, the man went down to this man went down to his house more justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. What a wonderful parable. Yes. Two men went into the temple to pray. The Pharisees, who were supposed to be self-righteous, self-justified, and the publican. The Pharisees stood up and prayed with him thus. He prayed with himself. So now listen. The Pharisees is going to tell God all about the good he has done. Him thank God so he is not like other men. So what he's saying, he's special. He's not unjust, he's not an adulterer. And he's not even like this, uh, this, this publican, so publican, just ordinary you know, ordinary citizen, you know, who have no status. So, so, so the Pharisees is telling God who he is and comparing himself to one who he thinks is less than himself. And he's going to tell God, I fast twice a week, I give tithes all I possess, not like this publican. So you see, the thing is that we cannot come before God and pray and tell God how good we are. We cannot come to God and pray and tell God how kind we are. We cannot come before God and pray and tell God how loving we are. Or how holy we are. You can't tell God that. Well, God knows everything. But he, did not, he, he thought he was justified in declaring himself as a good man. But then the publican, what God wanted to see and what God wanted to see in us is a humble and a contrite heart. We want to go there, brethren. We want to go there. Heaven is better than this. We want to go there. The publicans stood afar off. And not as much I look up to heaven. He don't raise his head to heaven. But his small, his breast and just these, you know, you know sometimes, sometimes when we're praying, you know, 
It's not the long prayer that God hears. It's not the long prayer that God is concerned about. Because what are we telling God about us that He don't know already? What are we telling God about ourselves? Oh, I do this, I do that, I, I'm this, I'm the, you know, I, I'm very loving, I'm kind, and I'm this, I give, and all this. What are we telling God all that? God don't want to hear all that thing there. And so was the Pharisees telling God all these things. The public, with all those words, all those big words. And the, the publican, Smartest by saying, God be merciful unto me, a sinner. Look at that. Look at the prayer of the publican. He say, God be merciful unto me, a sinner. Just those words. That's all he said. And said, so God says, I tell you that this man, this publican, this one that don't seem to seem to be insignificant to the Pharisees. This man that the Pharisees might look at with scorn. The Bible says, Jesus said, the man went down to his house more justified, rather ju justified, rather than the other. So it's telling us, brethren, we need to humble ourselves when we come to God. And we need to pray and ask God. You know the Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Some people believe that once they get saved, them get saved. We have to walk the walk. You can't just get saved and think, okay, get saved, put on everything and you go, you, you wait for heaven. Heaven, heaven gonna come for you. We have to walk the walk. I tell you, this man went to his house more justified rather than the man who exalted. Because it says, for everyone that exalts himself shall be a base. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So God look upon the humble. God look upon the humble. And the humble is a heart of love and forgiveness. And we're talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness. I'm looking at David. I like to talk about David. And I see in Samuel, 2 Samuel 21. Now, it says here, Second Samuel 21, and for verse 18, I'm reading, it says here, now in, the, in those days of David, in the days of David, there were some giants, giants in the, in the land. And um, many giants were there. And the children of Israel had to fight against giants. Tall, big, and um, we saw David killing one, which was um, Goliath. But they had Goliath as a brother, and he had some children as well, and they were giants as well. And the Bible says that, um, according to how they were, um, it says they had. Um, the giants had, on every hand, the giants had six fingers. And every toe, they had six toes. And every foot, they have six toes. So they had four, 24 toes and fingers all together. So in those days, they were giants. And you know, the Bible tells us about the children, the, the sons of God saw the children of, the son, the daughters of men and took unto them wives and they, came giants so there was giants in the land because of that because the angels sinned against God and this all this 
so there was giant and so the children of Israel at one time destroyed I think second Samuel 21 it says there were four giants there and the children of Israel killed those giants so there were so great giants and when David had the victory in second Samuel 21 the Bible says David rejoiced in God and made a psalm unto God a hymn of praise how God gave him the victory sometimes in our lives brethren we have giants that come up against us sometimes we have circumstances come up against us which is so gigantic when we look at these circumstances we say how do we manage these circumstances you know you know like when the children of Israel went out to, to search the land and when they came back with the report and said we were like we were like grasshoppers because they saw all the giants in the land and they said we can't go up against those giants we can't oh, oh, we can go up against those giants but Caleb and Joshua said we can go you know there's always the few that will say I will stand up against the giants we have to be the few that will say oh yes everyone every man was fearful when they heard the story about the giants in the land and how small the children of Israel were against them but Caleb and Joshua stood up and said we will go we can go God wants brave people God wants people to stand up without fear even though your land is full of giants God's, you God know you we ought to know that God will deliver us from the giants and so it was when David got saw all those died all those giants that was ten standing before Israel and they were slain by the children of Israel that David rejoiced and David wrote in Samuel's second Samuel chapter 2 he wrote a psalm a hymn of praise to God he said the, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer the God of my rock in him will I trust he is my shield he is the horn of my salvation he is my high tower and my refuge Virgin, when we think about David and the confidence that he had in God what a confidence and, and you know because he had such confidence in God he was not a man to fear he was not a man that feared And going on, I'm looking at verse 22 of the same second, um, second Samuel 22. Verse 24, he says here, I was also upright before thee and have kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore the Lord compass me around with righteousness according to the cleansiness of my eyes Amen. with the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful with the upright thou shalt show thyself upright to the pure thou shalt show thyself pure so we what we want God to, to be to us is what we should be if we want God to be merciful unto us we must show mercy if we want God to show us love then we must show love if we want to have peace then we must be peacemaker peace with God then we must be peacemakers yes. and so in it says According to thy cleansing of my heart, with the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful. With the upright thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure thou wilt show thyself pure. I say God is coming for a church 
And when God come, God want, you know, Jesus said in his word, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on earth? You know, we should be more faithful. We should be more faithful than even the apostles, and the, uh, 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 we should be more faithful more than the disciples and the apostles were. We should be more faithful. We should be more confident, even more than David was, in the God we serve. We are children of God, and it, sometimes it seems like. Uh, the smallest wind blow, we fall down. We're not standing up on the solid rock. We are wavering. We are doubting. And fear comes in. And despair. We are to stand up on the God that what we know. We should know more, even more. We should be more, even more, 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 more energized in the spirit than the disciples and the apostles were, even though that was the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. But God has not changed. He, he, won't, he required for us to be faithful. God, when God, when Jesus returned, He wants to see us faithful, trusting. Obeying his word, not doubting, and putting our trust in him. Amen. We should not put our trust in man. The Bible tells us clearly. Man cannot save us. Which man is it that died for us? Which man, which man is it that paid the cost, paid the price? of our salvation. Which man is it? And sometimes it seems like we trust man more than we trust God. If man say jump, we jump. It's not, we, we, don't, we, don't even, we don't even inquire of the Lord anymore. I remember the time in David when David had been to many battles. David fought many wars. And God had his mark on him and God gave him the victory. Many wars. David was a man who slew many, many Philistine Amorites. And many nations that came up against Israel. David went out with his army and he slew them. He was not fearful because he trusted in God. I can't understand how Christians say we are children of God. We have seen the power of God. We have seen where God has done so many miraculous work. How God has delivered, you know, like he delivered Daniel from the lion's den. He delivered the three Hebrew boy from the fiery furnace. He took um, uh, Lot and his wife out of Sodom and Gomorrah when he was going to burn rain, brimstone and fire upon that, that, that land because of their immorality. Amen. He burned up that city. Burn it up. And you know, we, we started talking about um, what Peter said unto Jesus. Um, how many times should I forgive my brother? Is it seven times? Or... And Jesus says, not seven times, 70 times seven. Our God is merciful. Now, if God say unto Peter and unto us that we should forgive 70 times seven, 70 times seven, if we calculate it, it comes with a number. You put it in your calculator and calculate it, it comes with a number. So 70 times 7 plus 1 is outside the scope. He says 70 times 7. If somebody, for instance, for, if somebody sin against us 70 times 7 plus 1, then the plus 1 is that we may or may not forgive them. But 70 times 7 is what Jesus says. And I imagine that when God 
rain, fire and brimstone upon Sodom and Gomorrah, the sin must have exceeded 70 times 7. And every time God brings judgment upon the earth, the sins of the earth must exceed 70 times 7. Thus saith the Lord. And any man, opportunity the door is open for those who have not repented to repent. The door is open. But we do not know when the door will be closed. But now the door is open for every man to repent. Don't look to man, look to the Lord for your salvation. The arms of flesh will fail us and we dare not trust our own. Put your trust in the Lord. Let us show mercy. And I say again, brethren, each and every one of us, be sure in our heart what our heart is saying. Our mouth and our heart is saying the same thing. And we're serving God. And when we stand up on His promises, we cannot fail. We will not fall. And God is our defense. David said, the Lord is my shield and my buckler. He sings praises to God. And in our hearts, brethren, let us sing praises to the God of our salvation because we don't realize the blessing that God has installed for His people. We don't realize, but let us walk the walk. Let us serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. And whatever is in our hearts, speak the truth in our hearts. And the blessings of God will be upon us. David said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge. We can say that. And when we say that, we know we can live a fearless life. When we say that and we mean that, we can say we are living a fearless life. Too much fear is going around now. Because we're not depending on the good Lord. Perfect love casts out fear. Let us serve God in spirit and in truth. Lean on the word of God. Stand upon the promises of God. And let us not stand on our own understanding. Because the Lord of hosts is with us. And he says when he was about to ascend to heaven, he says, I will be with you. No matter what the circumstances, God is with us. God is with us. We come to an end. And may I say, may the good Lord bless every one of you, my brethren. We need to stand up on the word of God. We don't need to live in fear. The children of God should not live in fear. Neither should we live in doubt. But know that the coming of the Lord. When we see these things happening around us. There's so much going on. I saw it sometimes a, a thing in Australia where they're holding on people and injecting them. The police, they came in, they were like wolves, chasing down the people, holding them down. The times and the times is on the air. Let us look up. Jesus says, when you see all these things, look up. Yes. Hallelujah. Cause your salvation, joy nigh. Nearly time, brethren. Nearly time to go home. Let us get ourselves ready to meet the Lord. 
Let us get ready. We can see what's going on around us. We don't need any news. We don't need the news, um, news to you know media to tell us what's going on. We can see. The end is upon us. God bless you all, and I'll close off there. Sister McLean, you're still there. God bless you, my dear sister. So nice to have you with us. Woman of God, we know you've been through many things, but the Lord has kept you, and I'm glad, I'm happy for your faith in God. I see your faith in God is unwavering. You are a blessed woman of God. Can I ask you to just close us in prayer? Okay, thank you very much for your encouraging words that you have just spoken. It's for us to take it on board and ask the Lord to help us as we go along. Because we are in the last days that we can see the signs of the time. We need no one to tell us, as you said. But all we have to do is to look up and search ourselves. Praise God. Amen. Most holy, righteous, and everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the King of Glory, the I Am that I Am, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We bow down before you tonight, Lord, and we worship you, Lord, Yahweh. You are the King of Glory. Amen. You are the only one who can give life and take it away. Mm. And so to you, God, we bow down before you. And we exalt Hallelujah. We lift your name, we praise you, we honor you, we adore you. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for another day. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, oh God, for keeping us through the raging storm. Amen. We thank you, Lord, though the billows roll, mighty God, and the and the sea rages. We know, God, that we have an anchor. Amen. Father, we thank you for the tonight. We thank you for, oh God, oh our dear brother Samson, who has laid us in such a wonderful and miraculous way. Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless your servant. Mighty God, and give him insight. Lord, we pray that your anointing will be on him. Lord, I pray that you will anoint his lips, anoint his hands. Let there be a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue to open his life. Mighty God, that the world can see that there comes a child of God. Father, we pray that you will bless him, Father, in his going out and in his coming in. And the weapons that form against him shall go on the earth. Amen. bless you my sister god bless you sister mclean god bless you god arms pt god bless you brina god bless you a one arm god bless you god bless every one of you the numbers they're not sure about these numbers god bless you brother david Amen. God be with you all. Have a blessed week, everyone. God bless everyone. God bless you all.
Brother Clinton. Uh, Amen. God be with you, my sister.